morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. We're having a little bit of a disaster in our house this morning. Don't mind the mess. I recently bought paints for my kiddos from Target, and we were going to do some painting this morning, but I can't remember where I hid them. <laughs> do you have that where you hide things around the house and you think, oh, this is going to be fine. This is going to be great. I'll be able to get these. And then you forget where they are. That's what happened to me today. So let's just enjoy the quiet while we have a moment. Really interesting news stories today that have a ton of intersections that I want to talk to you about. Um, I wouldn't say there's one major lead story, but there's a few, a few to keep an eye on. First of all, most of us are really dealing with freezing cold weather, snowy conditions, wintry conditions, flooding conditions, thunderstorms across the country. So if you think you're alone, just know that about 200 million Americans, so that's two out of three Americans, are impacted by this weather today. And it's really wide ranging, except apparently in Florida. So if you're joining us from Florida, we'd like to come visit. It's going to last for the next couple days, and it's just going to be something that meteorologists are just saying, like, it's going to be a force to be dealt with. And again, it's affecting a large swath of the country. Almost 40 states are being impacted by this weather. So here we are together. People talk about division in America, and look at what we're sharing in. So, <laughs> I mean, it is February. I guess we should expect it. I don't know what those pterodactyl noises are, but... Um, That'll be accompanying us. So one of the things I want to... Hey, Trace. Trace, what is that noise? Okay. <laughs> okay, so here's a couple of stories that I just think are interesting to watch. And it's the intersection of the United States and Russia that I'm paying close attention to. When Russia today, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, gave a State of the Nation address, sort of similar to our State of the Union, you know, big speech by the leader of the country. It's interesting to remember that Russia's population is about half the size of ours. I'm not getting up simply because her dad is, not because I'm ignoring my child crying. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the speech is wide ranging, talking a lot about what uh, is happening militarily for Russia, but also some domestic issues as well. And of course, one of the pending issues between America and the United States is this arms treaty that we agreed on during the, the Cold War, having to do with nuclear arms. The United States wants to withdraw from this treaty because we say that Russia is actually not following through on the agreement. So they're not, they're not, they're not following the treaty we're saying. Russia says, of course we are. And here's where the disagreement lies. So Vladimir Putin today says he's open to talking to the United States, but in the meantime, he's also developing some more uh, very modern weaponry. So talking a little bit out of both sides of his mouth, he also had uh, very specific promises he was making to the public, which I think is important to watch when it comes to poverty. You know, Vladimir Putin has high popularity in Russia, but the economy of Russia is not great. So he was promising lower mortgage rates, higher welfare payments, probably sounds familiar to you about what politicians promise at times. So I think we have to keep an eye on the domestic issues in Russia and the pressure that that, that government can fall under, like any government at any time. So that's what's happening in Russia today. The reason why I'm paying close attention to this is twofold. We also are watching what's happening in Venezuela. Here we have the United States supporting a challenger to the president uh, presidency of Nicolas Maduro. We know that there's a huge humanitarian crisis happening in Venezuela, and now billionaire Richard Branson is hosting a concert on the other side of the Venezuela border that they share with Colombia to raise what he wants to raise, $100 million for humanitarian aid. Now, he also supports the opposition leader to Nicolas Maduro. So there's some political undertones here. Now, what is Nicolas Maduro doing? Nicolas Maduro says he's not accepting any aid from the United States. He's going to host a concert to rival Richard Branson's. <laughs> Richard Branson's a billionaire, so we'll see who wins out. But uh, what is Nicolas Maduro doing? He's accepting humanitarian aid from Russia because Russia is one of his allies. So you see, when we're talking about why do we keep an eye on what Russia is doing, we want to see, you know, what do our adversaries, who do they support, where do they have inroads in areas that are closer to us. Russia is not close. Venezuela is much closer. And so that relationship is something is something to watch. The other reason why Russia comes up in the news today is sort of an... Uh, an interesting 
uh, another kind of correlation with with what uh, some of the news that we're watching, uh, and also Richard Branson and that space exploration. At this time, 57 years ago, John Glenn became the first astronaut to orbit the Earth, and it was a signal by the United States. Remember, we were behind the Russians that we were going to be competitors in the space race, and it was serious. A lot of things happened in that orbit that could have gone wrong, but it didn't, and John Glenn became this you know, famous astronaut. One of the things that NASA is now looking at, what happens when humans spend a long period of time in space? There's this ongoing study. Mark and Scott Kelly are two twin astronauts. One of them spent um, almost a year in space, and when he came back, they compared the twins' um, physiology. And the study's not done yet, but there's some preliminary results that show that the human body, although it reacts to being in space, um, re relatively speaking, returns to normal when back at Earth. So it's not to say that it wouldn't be without challenges, but this is the very kind of first inroads into seeing well, what would happen to us if we went and lived on the moon or went and had a project that was on the moon where we stayed for a long period of time and then used the moon to get to Mars, you know, or did some significant space travel. So that's why we're looking at that today as well. Uh, there was a big news conference on Friday that gave, again, these preliminary results sort of hinting at what's to come, even though the study is not complete yet. But this is something, you know, kind of bringing it back full circle. This is, this is all connected. There, there is a race for world domination. I mean, that's just, I know that sounds like a little bit like an Avengers movie, but there is this constant competition for, um, you know, who's the strongest, who's the biggest, who's the baddest. This is why there's a focus again by this administration in America on space exploration. Um, this is why Russia is a competitor because Russia also goes to space. Um, this is, you know, this is something that we should just sort of keep keep on our radar, no pun intended. So check out our cards on that today. Also, just quickly want to mention this story to you. I haven't heard anything about this, and I'm so curious if you have. Have you heard of the right to repair legislation? Have you? Okay. We covered it in our quick quote section, but you're going to see more about it later on our website this week because we totally geeked out about it last night. God's honest truth. So there are groups um, in places like New York State that get together. They're like bon volunteer-like clubs that fix things for people, like your bicycle or your television set. And, you know, it's not easy to fix things. I mean, I can't fix my own cell phone. I would totally replace it. I can't fix my toaster. I wouldn't do it. I mean, I, that may make me lazy, but I just don't know how to do it. And it's probably just as easy just to go buy another one. But there are those that say, wait a minute, we can't do it. And there was this whole industry for repairmen and women um, that no longer exists because we don't have the information or the parts for manufacturers that we once did. The right to repair legislation, which is working its way or trying to, trying to be considered in New York State, is also being considered in 15 other states. It's 16 states total where this legislation is being considered... Oh, or introduce. Yeah, you want to draw on that? And so that's what these repair advocates want to do. If your refrigerator is broken, they want to make sure you call the manufacturer and get the information. In the meantime, the manufacturer is saying, well, wait a minute, some of this is proprietary. And not for nothing, not everyone should be repairing some of these some of these objects. What about our, you know, what about even security concerns? They might have an interesting argument. We're going to take a closer look at that. I'm curious what you guys think about that. Oh, yeah, great. Our medicine cup's out on the counter. No Benadryl around. We're okay. <laughs> so, anyways, I think it's a really kind of interesting story because I think a lot of us are used to just not repairing anything anymore because it's too difficult. But should it be? I don't know. I think it's it's really interesting story. Hmm. Um final story and I just had this moment where I thought I don't know if you guys have had this moment where you thought am I getting older like am I really uh, Ariana Grande pop singer I should have worn my hair in a ponytail because that's her style um, has like the number one song one two and three song in the billboard charts hasn't been done since the Beatles there she is petite doing her thing and I was like, really, Ariana Grande? And then I realized that maybe I'm not so cool anymore. 
I don't know what that means. <laughs> but she made history, so I think we should know about it. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you guys want to hear more about the right to repair. I do too. I think it's, I, and I, I kind of want to know one of these amazing people that can repair things. Because it's not this, not this chick. Um, okay, guys, have a great day. Remember, I told you yesterday on Instagram, but just want to make sure that everyone knows, we're having a really fun conversation with Dr. Daria. Dr. Daria Gillespie is one of the early supporters of Smarter News. She came out with this book called Mom Hacks, which is hilarious short stories about her experience as a mom, also combined with some tips about health and healthy living for moms and children and dads and everybody. It's a really cool book. She just... Um, just released it yesterday, so we want to support her, and she's taking our questions for a podcast that we'll be releasing on Friday, podcast slash video. You can watch it in different ways, and I've gotten some great questions from you so far, including about the keto diet, another one just about staying healthy from a mom that just can't keep her family healthy, which we totally understand. I have a question about how at this time of year you determine whether you have a cold or an allergy. Our household is all stuffed up, but I can't tell what's really going on. So if you have any questions about your health or health-related topics, whether it's measles vaccinations that are serious or maybe something more fun, like a question about some of these fad diets, go ahead and email me, info at smarternews.com, or direct message me at well on any social media, and I'll include your question, maybe your first name. I don't need to expose your entire private life. <laughs> and we'll use them to have a fun conversation with Dr. Daria. She's a phenomenal doctor really easy to talk to and listen to. So I'm excited to bring your questions to her because it's kind of like, what a, what a fun way to get some information when sometimes it's not easy to Google or call your pediatrician or your doctor. So check that out. Think about it today and um, have a good one. Stay warm if you're in one of those areas that are cold. And if you're not, just know how jealous we are. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later.